YouTube family and welcome back to my home studio. I'm Archie Beats and I am here to help. I hope you guys are holding up great out there. Today we're discussing exactly what do you need for your home studio to record music. check this out me and the wifey just came from the ultrasound the other day the second ultrasound y'all see that it has our little baby has arms legs and this is a top shot look i'm like one of those proud dads that's gonna be doing the running around with the camcorders and the cameras all the time <laughs> on to the steak and potatoes of this video today we're chilling in my home studio and i want this video to be more personable we're doing things a different approach i got the fancy style b-roll videos that are dropping this wednesday for my monitors so you guys can check that out when that drops. But today I want to get a little personal with you guys. As you guys can see, my studio, I have a lot of things in my studio. It's taken me over 10 years to invest in my studio and have it exactly where I need it to be. I'm proud of it, but guys, you don't need all of this stuff. You don't need a U87, you don't need Adam A7Xs, you don't need Adam S3Hs, you don't, you don't really need that. It's always great to have high fidelity, high quality materials and, and tools in your studio because it's fun to work with and you get great quality out of it. But if you learn budget things or learn how to use it and be resourceful, um, you can get a lot of professional sounding things out of inexpensive tools and equipment in your home studio. So I just want you guys to understand that. But before we get started, if you guys are interested in anything that you've seen in my home studio, be sure to click below because I am an Amazon influencer and I have other girls there that could possibly help you on your creative journey. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and give me a thumbs up, y'all. I really do appreciate you guys. So one of the most asked questions on my channel is, Archie, what do I need to have a recording studio at home? How do I set it up? How can I just make great music? And it's really not that complex. You don't need a lot of gear to make great music and you don't need expensive gear to make great music or expensive equipment when I refer to gear. It's all about how you utilize it, as I said before. It's all about you using it to the best of its ability and getting the best out of it. And people will appreciate it because at the end of the day, it's all about the art. It's all about the sonic art, the psychoacoustic art of what you're doing at your house. So let's get right to it. The first thing you need is a CPU, a computer. A CPU is actually what's gonna hold everything. It's gonna hold your DAW, it's gonna hold your recordings, whatever, whatever vocals you record. It's gonna be the output of it, whether you're burning a CD or you're sending it out to people, email, we transfer. As a film composer and, and music producer and singer songwriter, I send a lot of retransfer, whether it's to a director or another artist or a film producer, I'm always sending it out. I barely burn CDs anymore. I hate I bought a CD burner just a few months ago because I really don't need it at this point. What's going to really dictate how well your recordings turn out is the quality of the computer. You don't need a MacBook, you don't need anything expensive. Just try to get something that has great reviews and also at least 16 gigs of RAM. What's required to actually run the program, the VST, you wanna make sure that you have something like that. And with the CPU, this is an accessory for the CPU since you're gonna be recording at home, you need a hard drive, some sort of storage space. You can have it internally, which I don't too much recommend. If you can do the computer, awesome, but if you have options, please get storage, get a hard drive so you can back up that awesome, dope music that you are creating. And also, the CPU, is what's gonna determine what type of audio interface you get because of the connection on it. Some computers have just USB, some computers have Thunderbolt, some computers have Firewire, which is obsolete now, but if that's something you can afford, you can get a good deal on it, go for it. So now it's time to go into the audio interface. Now they have awesome budget audio interface like the Audion Evo. And if you have the money, I would recommend the Universal Audio Apollo Twin. 
The Apollo Twin has been a lifesaver. I have the Apollo Twin and the Apollo A Quad, but it has been a sincere, guys, a sincere weapon in my studio. And right now, as you guys can see, I'm recording my brother Chingy just sent over this 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 record, and I'm mixing and adding some vocals to it. And shout out to Chingy, man. He made history. Um, I started out with the Track Stars, and it's uh, the guys that produced right there and all the other records with Janet Jackson and Snoop Dogg and all those records and Britney Spears. They started me in the game. They sat me in front of AWS 900 and the C24 and the rest was history. But yes, work with my boy Chingy and we getting this record done. Back to the video. The Apollo Twin is the most useful audio interface that I have ever invested in. And it's not even the most expensive one. So if you have the money, Apollo's range from 899 all the way up to 1400. And if you wanna go to the rack mount unit, they're around two, three grand-ish. You got access to a twin now, so you don't need to spend that much. You take your audio interface and you connect it to the computer and that pretty much is everything. And most audio interface come with DAWs, even the Apollo now. If you purchase the Apollo, you get the DAW. Luna. Other audio interface I suggest is the Focusrite Scarlet, which are really great, has great transparent, nice preamps, and as well as the Evo 4, as I stated earlier, very transparent. Um, I own the Evo 4, it sounds great. Really budget audio interface, but it has a smart gang on it, and it just does a lot of work that I wish, when I first became an engineer, that they had this type of technology back then. Okay, so now we done got the doll, which is on board your computer. Now let's talk about the microphone. I just actually did a microphone video two weeks ago, a budget microphone video, and these microphones sound great for a hundred bucks. And I own these microphones, the Blue Amber AKG P120, and also the AT2020. Y'all can watch that video right here if you're interested in listening to budget microphones and trying to pick the perfect microphone for your home studio, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, please check out this video because it's a game changing video for the YouTube community because I actually did audio tests for these microphones. So you guys want to definitely check that out. And here we have the AKG P120, which is a budget microphone for a hundred dollars. Phenomenal sounding microphone. Be sure to click this link right here so that you can just get a good idea of how phenomenal and great this microphone sounds. So we're gonna plug an XLR into the bottom of this microphone and then we're gonna go from there to plugging the other end of the XLR into our audio interface. And the microphone is still not on guys. You have to actually, since it's a condenser microphone, you have to initiate 48 volts which is phantom power. The 48 volts phantom power provides power to your condenser microphone. And now that we have our audio interface plugged in, we can power up our monitors by plugging in the XLR at the back and then going into the monitor section at the back of this audio interface. And the Atom A7Xs are slightly expensive, but trust me, these monitors sound phenomenal. You don't need them for starting out, but if you wanna invest in some really great studio monitors, I will suggest the Atom A7Xs because they have an awesome ribbon tweeter. They project the right amount of highs that I need. This is all just preference and opinion as well. And the, the woofer just gives that right sound for me, that right low end. And guys, keep in mind, you can take a pair of cheap monitors and become an excellent mixer and hear your playback accurately if you just get to know the monitors. It takes time to get to know the monitors. The most important thing that you're gonna do with any pair of studio monitors is getting to know them, know how they sound, know how they project, know how the bass responds, know, know how the high end responds to it. So you want to know your frequency response. You got to learn these monitors, any monitor that you get. Me for my microphone, my main microphone, I used a Norman U87, but you do not need that microphone. Super, super expensive. It took me 10 years to cook up the nerves to invest in that microphone. And I finally did. It's everything I hoped and dreamed for. Now we're going to talk about how the heck are you going to even hear? And how you're gonna hear either headphones or monitors, I suggest investing in both. Dropping a budget monitor video this Wednesday, I do, do, do recommend these monitors. When you're referring to budget in any industry, we're basically talking about how much is it worth on that market? What's an average of how much a professional is willing to spend or an entry level person that's on a budget, how much can they afford and they find a comfortable mean and set the price and do that. So budget doesn't necessarily mean $2 for a pair of studio 
video monitors is not gonna happen. The materials are too expensive, import is too expensive, and the engineering is incredible. So headphones, me, I use the Focal Listen Pros, and I use for my mixing, I use Sennheiser HD 600s. You don't necessarily need that. A, a great pair of headphones for a budget price is the Mix Cube right here made from Aventone, and also the Sony MDR 7506s. We call them 7506s. They are the legendary all around in every studio headphones, so they will be perfect too for recording. You can actually hear playback and you can, and they are closed back headphones. But if you're recording vocals, guys, closed back headphones, you're mixing, open back headphones. Don't try to record with open back headphones because it will bleed into your microphone. DAW, D-A-W, that is your digital audio workstation. That's what you're gonna record on. That's what you're gonna produce on. It's, it's a multi-track recording system, or if you're making beats, it's still a multi-track recording system that you layer your tracks on and you record that great music. And with DAWs, the significant thing about DAWs, you can record on them, you can mix on them, you can master on them, you can make music on them. You could just create this bouquet of sonic deliciousness that we all are striving to create. If you're a producer and you want to create great music, you just need one more thing. I will always recommend a keyboard MIDI controller, and it's not because I'm the key oracle. Me, as a person of music, a music major, that was my first major before engineering, and a serious musician, I recommend anybody starting out in music to learn just basic chords. You don't have to be Beethoven. You don't have to be Stevie Wonder or Ray Charles. What I'm saying is it helped me a lot as an engineer and producer when I already sang in the jazz band, played the keys and jazz ensemble when I was in college, and I moved over to the awesome world of, of the music industry. It really helped me out because knowing how to play basic chords it's basically a shortcut. It's basically a shortcut and also you're training your ears in the process. So when an artist asks you for advice, a singer, when they ask you for advice, you can kind of guide them. That's what music producing is really about. It's about guiding the artist to a complete body of work from start to finish and you guys are mixing your sound together and you're helping them out from a creative and yet technical perspective. That's what this is, man. Now, if you're using a MIDI controller, most of them are USB. I haven't seen anything else unless you're having a MIDI uh, MIDI cable going into a USB converter. But for the most part, these go in USB. So it's basically a printer cable. You have your standard USB at the other end and then the USB-B on the other end, that big wide piece. And you just connect that to your computer. At this point, you are ready to go let's talk about the accessories of the recording studio that you're building you're gonna need cables xlr you're gonna need speaker cables normally xlr to quarter inch or you can use an rca cable most professional audio interface are going to have a quarter inch so you go from the speaker and most professional monitors are going to have a xlr that goes out and you can change that to a, a quarter inch at the other end if you get that quarter inch and xlr cable trust me trust me at the bigger facility we have adam s3h's they're like 37 hundred dollars a piece and those monitors come with XLR it's just a professional way to do it so you want to make sure that you get speaker cables and you're going to need stands such as microphone stands and a keyboard stand for your MIDI controller that's if you want to buy a controller the next thing you're going to need I recommend is a hub a USB hub in most cases you're going to need a lot of USB connections whether it's your MIDI controller MIDI controllers haven't pretty much went to Thunderbolt yet um, or Firewire, they're just USB, and you're gonna need stuff for stuff like that. And also the dongles and the iLock, they're gonna have USB. They're all USB. So you're gonna need that. And the next thing, if you are just setting up a room or something, get some sort of a paneling or some sort of, I don't really recommend foam like that, but if that's what you can afford, foam has helped me out a lot, especially the Oralex when it, when I first started out. For the first seven years of having a home studio, I used Oralex and it wasn't bad at all. I got a lot of records mixed for radio using Oralex, but now I have the London 12s. They run a little more expensive and a Stratus Cloud made from Prime Acoustic and also any type of small USB thumb drive. I recommend you get those. You always want to have those on deck because you'll know you have to run over to something real fast. You don't want to unplug your hard drives or anything like that, which leads me. Also, you need hard drives as well. Get you one great hard drive for you to back up, for you to run VSTs from, because I use my East West as a huge collection and I want to take it up my space. So I have all my heavy VST sounds um, pretty much on my hard drives. And I have the Glyph Studios all throughout my recording studio. So they have done 
great i hope that i helped you guys with this video because the recording process is not that hard you just have to get out there and you have to create it's not that difficult i want you guys to be encouraged i want you guys to be creative this isn't about anything else it's about being creative being creative putting out the music that make you feel good and that make other people feel good as well so i really do hope that you guys enjoyed this video and, and if you have any questions make sure you guys comment below i am here for it you guys are my family let's keep this audio ecosystem going by helping each other out don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell so you won't miss another video you guys are absolutely phenomenal and i really do hope that i helped some of you guys out out there this is your boy archie beats and i'm signing off archie beat on the beat yeah, yeah. Yeah.